Hello and welcome to Tech Has No Borders. I'm here with Felix, and today our show is about Michael Scott's HR management style. So um, let's get right to it. The, the channel's name is Tech Has No Borders. Why do you think we like? Why are we? Why have we chosen this topic? I think the main link is that if you watch The Office, yeah. you realize that eventually they're also digressing and technology is moving further. and in some sense that is representative of even our time right now any structural change technologically will affect people in its lives and i think this show is kind of representational of that uh yes i agree perfectly um when we watch the office uh the status quo of the of dunder mifflin running against technology is it's it's a theme that appears repeatedly throughout the show I mean, it's you can first see it when Ryan uh, tries to introduce a new, a new computerized system, and and after that, even after that, various times, um, Dwight gets into a sales fight against um, a machine. It, it invades the lives of Dunder Mifflin, and I think it would be an interesting topic to explore. What is exa- what exactly is technology? Is it how should it affect management, and Alongside that, Michael Scott in general, because he is one of the most iconic characters in, and on TV. Before we talk about HR, before we talk about management, what is so special about Michael Scott? Oftentimes characterized as a stupid character, he is actually one of the most memorable, and I you can't stop, but watch him. Briefly, like describe his character based on like. Uh... the archetypes of characters in most dramatic plays in cinema so any comedy has these 12 archetypes of characters and sometimes there's an ardachino there's you have your heroes you have your lovers and when you look at the office all those archetypes are completely in place you have the lovers which are jim and pam sometimes the hero is replaced by the clown and that clown is the so called sad clown So in some sense his archetype of character is that he is the sad clown. So he tries to make people laugh but ultimately you uh, the audience connects with him on a deeper level because they understand his sadness. I I I agree. Michael Scott is kind of like a lonely character mm-hmm. and that is that shows his human side, humane side. Um my question is then what kind of boss do you think Michael Scott is? I think he's a good boss. Okay. Uh, in the sense of authentic leadership. Okay. So what he is is a people's person. So he's almost like you would say a reformist of our generation. Like he's actually working with all the people in his office, and he's not. First, he doesn't let anyone get fired. So he always has everyone's back. The the retention rate is incredible. <laughs> no one no one leaves. No one leaves. And then uh, Michael Scott also constantly organizes HR activities. Uh-huh. He's always outgoing. He's always trying to. Because he's lonely. It might be so, yeah. But no, yeah, I think even when he's with Jan, like he organizes parties and casino night. Yeah, I think he did that when he had two dates. Yeah. <laughs> Season two, last episode. Yeah. He also like uh, I think he engages a lot of team building activities. But the question is, is Dunder Mifflin a team? Are they a team? I guess unknowingly. Unknowingly. Yeah, like uh, when something bad happens, they like group up and help each other. Okay, what do you think is good about Michael Scott's HR management? One thing that's good, one thing that's bad. As a manager, one he's all for his team he doesn't let any guy one get fired he's a people's person he listens to their problems he tries to solve their problems and if you look at it his numbers are the best amongst all the dunder mifflins yes so surprisingly surprisingly his numbers are the best why is he a bad manager hmm so i think when he creates havoc he's not really in control of what he's doing okay. so like i think on safety day he completely destroys the warehouse he keeps having these fits of like callous behavior where he just is wrecking everything 
so i guess that's when he also then he decides to leave his team when he tries to get the job at corporate that's also an example of i guess that's not good management then okay now we're talking about michael scott's management so we're talking about him as a manager and this is something that i feel a lot of people get wrong managers and entrepreneurs are actually different things i mean they i, I mean you could argue that managers it include like a subset of managers are entrepreneurs and like CEOs and stuff but here i feel that it's important to make a distinction because a manager does not necessarily need to be a CEO or an entrepreneur i mean i i, I do think that a lot of people would have different ideas regarding whether or not michael scott is a good um manager but i would say that he's definitely not a good entrepreneur because he's not actually he's not actually creative mm. i mean okay um so, so he has some, uh, he has some creativity but i mean he's he's not a good entrepreneur he is definitely not ceo material but as a manager i mean that's a different question and that's where we are going to talk uh, that's a section that we are going to discuss okay i believe that there is a a fundamental assumption that underlies Michael Scott's management philosophy and that is managers can be friends with their employees what do you think about that i mean he keeps telling people that you know he keeps convincing the camera team that you know he's friends with jim and he's friends with everyone in the office <laughs> but then <laughs> they they don't take him seriously so it's quite funny but i i don't know i think managers can be friends right with their employees what do you think you just asked me a question i i think you can be friends but then again you have to be the draw the boundaries i mean you leave your personal life behind when you get into your professional situation and i mean you have to draw the line it's a different it's it's a difficult question actually mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say this: the addition to, of Andy and Aaron to the team is, I think, crucial in Michael Scott's development as a character. Because you add, because I feel that um, Aaron and Andy are both—they are both gradients of Michael in a sense, who are kind of his loyal, most loyal followers. I think. and that makes the whole dynamic much more interesting cuz if you look at season 1 Michael is pretty much an asshole back then yeah he's like a pompous yeah like who just talks about himself constantly ha uh-huh. so they make him seem normal as well they help him and this is something um i wanted to discuss also cuz i do think that management styles are not set in stone they always change with the team that you have you have to remember but the dunder mifflin scranton branch has not always been the most profitable branch it happens later after the merger before the merger uh jan tells michael that um that they they might have to let people go the rise in profitability happens with the merger and i think the merger uh, season 3 one of them earliest episodes i think um is one of the most pivotal moments in the office history because the, a lot of the people change mm-hmm. more people are added and with this new w- with the influx of these new people it, then it becomes michael scott's moment to shine mm-hmm. i watched the first time i watched the office i think i it, it was in 2014 not not too long ago And back then when I watched it I thought it was like a funny it, it was a funny funny comedy. Mm-hmm. Actually um like most people I think I started out by hating Michael Scott but for some reason I couldn't stop watching the show and by the end of it I he turned into one of my favorite characters in TV history. And a lot of the reason behind that is so for instance we we run a tech company mm-hmm. and we do tr- we try to do like new innovative stuff we make 
apps, software. We try to think of new things that haven't been done before. And because of that, obviously, if Michael Scott was running a tech company, it wouldn't make sense. But these guys are in Scranton. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a small town. And I'm very sure that even though Ryan, uh, even though like Ryan and Dwight and Jim look very smart at, at, compared to the rest of the team, they're just pretty much normal guys. And for the team that they have, I do, I, I, I can see why people think Michael Scott has, I mean, has good chemistry with them. He's, he doesn't get in their way. I mean, he, he, he does get in their way, but it's, yeah. He's, he's a goofball. Um, my question is, why do you think they appointed Michael Scott as manager? Uh -huh. So they must have appointed him because his sales are exceptional. It's evident in the episode when him and Jan go to meet uh, one guy at, I think, Chili's. Yeah. And like he basically makes that whole personal connection. Then he approaches them as a friend, which is, I think, the USP of Dunder Mifflin also. So you get good some customer service. If they, you're their client, they respond to your calls, you know, on a one-on-one. -on -one. So I guess that's why I think he's a very good salesman actually and that's probably why he eventually became probably regional manager. To be honest, and it just actually occurred to me, Michael Scott is a very lonely guy. Mm. And in my life, mm. I do feel that a lot of the most successful pe people I've met mm -hmm. are actually very, very lonely people. It's their loneliness that drives them to succeed. Yeah, I, ju I just, it just... It's like the social network. Yeah, exactly. It may not be true, but the movie itself mm -hmm. is uh, is the story of, David Fincher's version of it at mm -hmm. least, is the story of a lonely person who is, who is triggered by one event mm -hmm. that sets him on the course to revolutionize the computer industry. Um, in celebration of the fact that we are here in India talking about Michael Scott, I thought it would be interesting to show a clip of Michael Scott in episode one, uh, no, season one, episode two, Diversity Day, where Michael makes fun of Kelly Kapoor by, with her, about her Indian accent, and she gets slapped, and I think that's a funny way to end it here. Take a card. Put it on your forehead. Don't look at the card. I want you to take the card and I want you to put it on your forehead. And I want you to treat other people like the race that is on their forehead, okay? I think you do, Mom. Stop. Okay, all right, no. All right, it's good. It, you, you just you need, you need to push it. You know, you need to go a little bit further. Kelly, how are you? I have the longest meeting. Oh, welcome to my convenience store. Would you like some googie googie? Try my googie googie. Try my googie googie. Try my googie googie. Try my. And there it is. <laughs> See, Michael Scott is an asshole in season one. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is a race, and he's Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> it's like he purposefully. But anyways, okay, so we just had talked about Michael Scott's HR management style amongst various topics, and I think we had a fruitful discussion here. Um, Saurabh, would you like to sign out? So this was Tech Has No Borders, I'm Saurabh, and that's Felix signing out from Noida.